Hey boys and girls, Mr. Nick here. Uh, I am so excited to get to be with you guys uh, today. This is the first time in 2021 that I'm getting to hang out with y'all and uh, I just want you to know that I miss you so much. I hope you're having a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year. I hope you're staying warm. I'm filming this a couple of days before you're seeing it, uh, but I think it's supposed to snow today. So fingers crossed that it is. And hopefully you get to uh, maybe get outside for a little bit and play. Um, if it's not snowing, forget I said anything, um, but I hope it is. Um, but I miss you guys all so much, um, and I'm excited to get to be with you today to uh, kind of give you our Bible lesson for this week. Um, so this week, uh, just like a lot of uh, the last few months that we've been talking, uh, we're talking about a new fruit of the Spirit, right? So we've been going through... Um, all the different fruits of the Spirit that are talked about in Galatians 5.22. And today we are talking about faithfulness and how faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. So what is faithfulness? It's kind of a big word, right? Like, uh, what does that even mean? Basically, faithfulness means that you are reliable, that you are trustworthy, that when you say you're going to do something, you do it. Uh, and God gives us the gift of faithfulness um, because God is faithful to us. And so we can be faithful towards one another. We can be reliable and trustworthy to our friends and our family and those that we come in contact with every day. So this week we have a new verse. Um, so we've been going over our verse in Galatians 5.22 a lot. Um, that remind us of all the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But this week, we also have another verse that comes from Psalm 119.90, and it says, Your faithfulness continues through all generations. And this is talking about the your here, is talking about God. So it's telling us that God's faithfulness is for us for all of time. You know, the books of the Bible were written a very long time ago. Uh, and so this verse reminds us that even though we're far in the future from whenever this was written, that God is still faithful um, to his children today as much as he was back then. And so um, we have a little craft that we're going to do first to help us think about faithfulness. Um, and then we're going to do our Bible lesson for this week. Um, so you should have gotten a paper heart. I think yours is going to be pink, um, but uh, you should have gotten a, fa a, a, a paper heart. Um, and then you should have some things to decorate with. Maybe get out a pen or some markers or crayons, whatever you want to draw or decorate it with. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to write the, this fruit of the spirit that we're talking about today, faithfulness on our heart uh, and then writing we're going to write our name on it as well to remind us that God is faithful to us and we are faithful to others and then we can decorate it however we want on the front and the back mine got see-through so I just decorated the front um, I decorated it with fruit to remind me that faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit um, I wrote the memory verses that we have. We're also going to go over a, a story in 1 Samuel today. So I wrote that right up here. Um, you can write anything you want or decorate this any way you want. Uh, maybe with a name of a friend that has been faithful to you or, or a family member. Um, or draw something that makes you think about faithfulness. So maybe click pause on this video right now and then spend some time decorating your heart. Uh, and then whenever you're ready for the next step of the craft, just click play again and we'll move on. So hopefully you have decorated your heart. You should also have uh, a ribbon or a piece of string, right? And there will be a hole in the top of your heart. And you can just loop that string through it and tie a knot in it. Uh, and your heart can become something that you can hang around Maybe your bedroom or even around your neck, um, hang it on your door handle or, or next to your sink so it can remind you about faithfulness, God's faithfulness and this fruit of the spirit. Um, and so I hope you do that. I'm going to hang this on my door right over here 
So every time that I come in and out of my bedroom, I see this and am reminded of God's faithfulness toward me. So that being said, we're going to get into today's lesson. Um, today's lesson comes out of a book in the Bible called 1 Samuel, um, which is towards the beginning of your Bible. Um, and it's a story about a guy, two guys, two friends named David, who was a shepherd, and Jonathan, who was the son of a king. David and Jonathan were best friends. Uh, do you have a best friend? Uh, I have several best friends, really close friends, um, and they just make me feel so good, right? They're reliable, they're faithful, they're trustworthy. Um, and the Bible tells us that David and Jonathan were faithful to one another, um, that they were like brothers and they were inseparable. Um, and so in honor of them being best friends, sometimes best friends have secret handshakes, right? And in our story, we're going to kind of be involved in the story with a secret handshake. Is that okay? I'm going to teach you a secret handshake, two actually, that are part of our story. Uh, and then whenever we get to a certain part, I'm going to ask you to uh, give me the secret signal back to me, right? So we're going to need uh, a signal for stay and a signal for run, okay? And so the signal for stay is you can pat your legs twice. So I'm just going boom, boom. And then we're going to give a thumbs up, okay? Let's practice it. Boom, boom. Good. And then our signal for go is going to be the same thing, pat twice, and then crossing our, our arms over our chest, right? So let's practice that. Okay? So that's our secret friendship handshake. Um, the first one for staying and the first one for running away. So David and Jonathan, like I said, were best friends. David was a shepherd, so he watched over sheep all of the time. And, and Jonathan, his dad, was the king. But there was a slight problem with their friendship. God had told David that he was supposed to be the next king. Now, normally, the way things worked back then is the son of the king would become the next king after the king who was in charge would die or get too old. Um, and so Jonathan was supposed to be the next king, but God told David he was going to be the next king. Just the shepherd boy was going to be the king. So this was a little odd for them, but Jonathan was actually okay with it. He was such a good friend to David, and he trusted God so much that uh, he was okay with the fact that God wanted David to be the next king. However, Jonathan's dad, King Saul, was not okay with this. King Saul was very angry at the fact that Jonathan was not going to be the next king. Uh, and this caused a major division in um, Jonathan and David's friendship. And so... Um, Sorry, I'm making sure I have all of my stuff over here just right. Um, anyway, so David was supposed to be the king, um, and Saul didn't like that. So they needed to devise a plan to find out if Saul actually was so mad that he was going to kill David just so that Jonathan would be the king. And so Jonathan and David came up with a secret handshake, if you will, or a secret signal. Remember our secret signal? Right? This one to stay and one to run. It's the same thing that Jonathan and David did. Uh, David was trying to figure out if he could stay or if he needed to run away because Saul was going to try and kill him. And so they devised this super interesting plan. There's going to be a huge party the next day. And whenever I'm talking about huge, I mean ginormous. Like back in that time, parties would go on for days. Can you imagine like just several days in a row of, of fun and food and dancing and games? So there was going to be a party the next day. And David was going to not show up. 
he was going to go hide in a field, but Jonathan was going to show up. And uh, if Saul was mad that David didn't come to the party, that meant that he wanted to kill David and that David needed to run away. But if Saul was okay that David didn't come to the party, that meant that David could return and come back and everything was going to be fine. So the secret signal that Jonathan and David had with each other is that if Saul was fine that David didn't show up to the party, David was supposed to hide behind a rock in a field and Jonathan was going to shoot three arrows. And if they landed near him, he would tell his servant to go get these arrows and tell him to come on back. Um, and that was to signal that David could come back, that everything was okay with Saul and, and all was going to be okay. However, if Saul was angry, Jonathan was going to shoot three arrows far away from David. And whenever the, his servant was going to get the arrows, he was going to yell out to the servant, I think I shot them too far. You can't go get them. I think I, you know, I shot them over your head. And that was supposed to signal to David that he needed to run, that it was not okay for him to return. So that was their secret signal. Just like our secret signal is stay or run, okay? So the next day, the party was going. It was uh, day one of the party. There were balloons. It was music and dancing and everybody was having a good time. And it came time for dinner and Saul had noticed that David wasn't there. Um, but he didn't say anything. So that's kind of good news, right? Like it didn't seem like Saul was mad. The party went on and it was okay. But the next day, the party kept going and there were more balloons and there was more dancing and there was more games. And they sat down for dinner and Saul noticed that David wasn't there again. And so Saul asked Jonathan, his son, Hey, where's David? I, uh, I thought he was going to be here. I don't see him. What's the deal? And Jonathan told Saul that David had asked to go back to his hometown and take care of some things, um, but that he would come back later. And this made Saul so mad. He got so angry that Saul threw an arrow, a spear, at his own son, Jonathan. Fortunately, it missed him. It didn't hit him. But this was a pretty clear uh, indicator that Saul was not happy that David wasn't there, and it was not okay for David to return. And so, what signal did Jonathan need to give David? Did he need to give him the stay signal or the run signal? He needed to give him the run signal. Boom, boom. And so Jonathan went out to the field where David was hiding and he shot his arrows far away from David. And whenever his servant went to go collect the arrows, he shouted out that they were too far, that they were way over his head. And David heard this and was so sad because he knew he had to run away. He had to run away from his best friend, Jonathan. And so the servant came back. And once the servant went back to the party, um, David and Jonathan got uh, a few moments to say goodbye to each other. And I imagine this was so sad uh, because Life was a lot different back then. They didn't have the kind of technology that we have now where we could send email or text message or a phone call. The fact that David was leaving meant that they would probably never see each other again. And they were like brothers. They were inseparable. And so they hugged each other and they cried to each other and, and they said their goodbyes. And it's kind of a sad ending, but David did end up becoming king. Um, but Saul, or, but Jonathan was faithful to David. And it makes me think 
of kind of this idea that losing your best friend or or what that's like to have like a good friend move away it's kind of like walking around with one shoe on right like have you ever done that before like you're missing a shoe or you can't find your other shoe and you're walking around the house with just one shoe on why don't you go ahead and do that right now like take off one shoe and walk around with one it's a little uncomfortable right like it it's hard to do and it you can tell that something is missing that's probably what it felt like on the inside for David and Jonathan when they had to go their separate ways. Um, and even though they had to say goodbye to each other and they had to go out kind of the rest of their lives feeling that inside about kind of one shoe uh, on one foot and no shoe on the other, um, they knew that they were faithful to each other and they were also faithful to God's plan for David being the king. And that reminds me of our Bible point this week, which is faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. You see, Jonathan was faithful to David as a friend. He made sure that David didn't get killed. He risked his own life. And Jonathan gave up being king for David. Like that was uh, a really uh, good friend. And that was a really good good sign of faithfulness. And so friends, today we learned what it means to be faithful. And I want you to think of the secret handshake that David and Jonathan had to each other to prove their faithfulness to one another and to God's plan. They were friends, just like you and I are friends, Miss Nydia, Miss Mimi, Miss Sandra. And so Uh, I want to leave you with this one secret code uh, that reminds us that we are all friends. This is sign language for friends. Okay? So that is like the secret code of David and Jonathan to remind us whenever we see each other that we are friends. Or whenever you see your family or someone in the hallway at school, that you are friends and friends are faithful to one another. Does that sound good? Well, I'm gonna pray for us and I want you guys to know that I love you so much and uh, I miss you dearly, but I look forward to getting to hopefully see you guys uh, soon. Um, And so let me pray and then we will be done today. God, we are so grateful that you are faithful to us, that you are our friend and friends are faithful to one another, and that you've taught us what it looks like to be faithful. We thank you for the story of Jonathan and David and their faithfulness to one another, because it gives us kind of a picture of what that looks like. That when things are hard, um, that we can be true to ourselves and true true to those around us. Um, God, we pray that your love would um, fill us up and that we would be excited to give that love um, to other people. We pray for your presence this week as we go throughout our work um, and our school, Um, and we pray that we would honor you and lift you up in everything we do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a great week. I hope it's snowing. Go play in that snow, Um, and I will see you next time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.